How's it going, everybody? It is your favorite apostates. I am McKay. And I'm Jordan. And we're back with another one. Hopefully, if you live in America, your week was not the absolute worst. But if you do live in America, it probably could have been. This week sucked. So hopefully we can uh, put a little bright spot in the darkness. If you don't live in America, you probably already know. Anyway, before we get started on everything, I wanted to make a note about our Patreon exclusive live stream that we're going to be doing at the end of next month. That would be June 25th. That's a Saturday at 8 p.m. We are going to be streaming, doing a watch party with our patrons of... Saturday's Warrior. Saturday's Warrior yesterday. I'm going to plug the Discord here too. I did a little uh, little preview for the people in the Discord, so join that there. But um, yeah, we're going to do a little watch party, just stream it private for the patrons. So if that's something that you would like to know more about or be involved with, join us on Patreon. You can find us at patreon.com slash Jordan and McKay. Now that that's out of the way, we will move on to today's topic, which is really widely uh, requested over the past little while, but it didn't really seem like significant of enough. My brain just died. <laughs> Let's restart. It didn't seem like a significant of an... It didn't seem significant enough to comment on or really because we were talking about other things that were kind of in the same vein at the same time but holy shit has it just kind of blown up up. and uh, literally people are like what the fuck is going on so we (laughs) we looked into it but today we're going to talk about the situation with taylor frankie paul uh some of you may know her from mormon milf talk (laughs) We have talked about her before. We've included, I think we did. Yeah. We've included totally mom talk videos in one of our influencer videos. So yeah, if you've been around a while, garments. you'll recognize these influencers. Yeah, but we uh, just kind of basically went over the situation. This time, there's much more to be discussed than there was last time. And thank you, everybody, for suggesting it. Sorry if you, you were waiting for a long time, but uh, yeah, now it has turned into a thing <laughs> i've been inundated with dms on instagram and it we couldn't not do it any longer we were getting too many questions so what is the purpose of this video we are going to discuss the explosions that have been happening in what they call the mom talk universe on tiktok these women gained popularity on tiktok within the last year or so and man did it it just like popped off for, in a big way. <laughs> for my personal belief was because they were tagging, they were dragging Mormonism into something that Mormonism really had nothing to do with. And so we'll include some videos in a moment so you can see what we're talking about. But the gist of it, you know, you're dying to hear this group, somebody out of the rest of the group saying that some of the people in the group are swinging. So we've got some references to swinging some a group member taylor paul taylor frankie now i guess who outright said that the group members of the group we won't say all of the group but some members of the group are swinging um and it was something that happened on the regs so we're going to talk about that from the ex-mormon mormon framework given that we are ex-mormons and used to be practicing mormons so hopefully that will give you some needed perspective on this situation Due to the nature of what we are talking about today, I want to make a few disclaimers. If you are here watching this, you probably maybe have some idea that we will be talking about um, swinging today. And regardless of your personal opinions on swinging, we would like to make it very clear that we are not here to comment on swinging in general. We are absolutely in favor of ethical non-monogamy, polyamory, as long as people have informed consent and adults are consenting to participate. Do you? I don't give a shit. If you have heard us talk about polygamy in the past or polyandry as it relates to Mormonism, we are very scrutinizing because that is a whole different story. When we're talking about consenting, informed, at least... As as far as far as we can tell in most of the places, adults 
doing as they please because they're adults, that's great. But when you introduce uh, the patriarchy, indoctrination, and the fear of eternal consequences into the mix, it then becomes a little bit muddied. So when we talk about Mormonism and their polyamory and polyandry and things like that, that's a whole different thing. To start, I think we should watch a few of these videos so you can just kind of get a taste for, for what we're discussing today. Due to the nature of TikTok, some of these will have to have the sound cut, so we'll try to do our best and kind of describe what's going on. Um, but yeah, bear with us. First one. Soda cups. Why do Mormons have so many kids? For our listeners, we have a giant line of women, all in black yoga pants and cropped sports bras, dancing with cups in their hands, presumably maybe soda. Stanley cups? What? Expensive soda cups, and they're all doing, they're dancing to this little song in a giant McMansion. Um... And so, why do Mormons have so many kids? And then there's all these hot women that come, like, striding in. And you're like, okay, yeah. Okay. Cute. Love that for you. But at the same time, it's like, there's some, if you're familiar at all with Mormon culture and Mormon doctrine and Mormon rules, you're looking at these women and going, wait a minute. What, what's going on right here? What, are these Mormons? I'm confused in this one. This is just when when he gross. holds the priesthood. I want to write it. I want to write it. Yeah. Is the uh, the song how the song goes? And there which, is which I mean. How many of them in here? Probably do like you. Do you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of them, or so. Ooh, fourteen of them. So first of all, that's just fucking dumb. That is. Um, I don't know how anybody could make this unironically and think it's not cringe. Like, at all. It makes you so hot that you have the thing that I can't have because the church is misogynistic. Like, what? Awesome. You have a power that I can't attain because I am a woman and have a vagina. And that really turns me on. Who? Hello? Hey. <laughs> what is happening? So all of this that is happening is based around opinions, people's accounts, differing opinions, different thoughts lying withholding you know anytime something like this happens over the internet and multiple people are involved you get you know multiple sides multiple stories right so we're not here to assume that everybody who participates in this tiktok group is swinging like that's not we're not trying yeah. to make wide generalizations here um but while i also want to hold and maintain that i'm not like going out of my way to feel bad for this group of women because that's who you choose to align yourself with and you put it on social media. Yeah. Sorry if to say. If you don't want to be associated with a thing, I mean, don't be associated with some of those people. Like, if you're, I mean, I Plain get, simple. <laughs> I get that she didn't want to name names and we'll get to that in a moment, but I don't feel bad for the people involved in this. I don't. Because if this is something that you're doing and you're participating in it or you're associating yourself with people who do, like if it's really that bothersome to you, then you're like, no, I don't know. But they can do them and that's fine. But that's not what we're here to discuss. Like you put yourself on the internet. That's what you get. Sorry to tell you. Don't feel bad. We're in the same seat. so That's just what happens. Especially when you join a group of like a... Not like a giant group, but a clicky type group where there's a lot yeah. of people involved and you all kind of set yourself up to be the same. Like y'all look the same. You wear the same stuff. You do the hair the same way. Yeah. You do the same TikToks. You use the same songs. So I don't think it's really fair to like be questioning why people made a leap to say that you would be into the same things. Is it accurate? Probably not. But this is the way that you guys have set up your TikToks. Like, I'm yeah. sorry. That's just a little intro, and then here's kind of a, as we dive into this, like, I don't even know how to describe it. It is like a web of insanity at this point. So I'm going to have to, like, break things down as simple as I can in the time allotted, because there's so many, like, probably some things that I will have to leave out for time's sake. But let's introduce our big three. 
there are three, we'll call them main characters. I feel like two of them very much have main character syndrome. But <laughs> there are three of them that we are going to be discussing it's today. I'm it's the one. me. Um, we've got Taylor Frankie Paul, who's at the center of all this and kind of propelled everything into motion. Um, we have Camille Monday, and then we have Miranda McCorder. And I don't know if I said any of those incorrectly. I don't really care, but <clears throat> those are the, the big three that are involved. So just so you can envision who they are and their faces and what they look like, I will play these two videos for you to kind of give you an idea. And mind you, these three are kind of like the... I would say most recognized faces out of the mom talk group and yeah. they do like the most content focused on the mom talk things. So they're like the three, but as you can see in this first video, there's more than just the three of them. Oh, please. You guys love me. I keep it real and I'm hilarious. And actually, you're just a bitch. Whoa. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa. I'm sorry. You just wait, go ahead for one sec. I'm going to get a solo shot. <laughs> My sisters look so crazy. So the one in the center is Miranda. The one on the left is Camille. And then the one on the right is Taylor. So now you kind of know what they look like. Let's talk about the three of them individually. And then we will get into the down and dirty details. And I mean that quite literally this time. <laughs> what did Moira Rose say about gossip? Gossip is the devil's telephone. It's best to just hang up. Unfortunately <laughs> for, well, fortunately for all of you, we're not hanging up today. Sorry. So. This is Satan's Ponzi scheme, <laughs> and we are running the fucking phone bank right now, so. <laughs> okay, so first and foremost, I wanted to do a back, like a little bit of a backstory on these three, just as it kind of relates to Mormonism and like just general things so you have an idea of what's going on. So first up, Taylor Frankie Paul. She's married to Tate Paul, and they have two kids. As you can see from these videos, the vibe that you're going to get from each and every one of them is none of them wear garments, and that's not... That's one of their big things. ...inherently Mormon. So, you were, like, if you're already confused, that's okay. You're, you're in good company. We all okay? were, too. We're all confused. So, uh, Taylor and Tate were married in 2016. At that time, they did not have a Mormon wedding from the photos that I could see. They were... Her dress was not, her dress was cute, like by my standards, but it was not Mormon temple appropriate. Um, so at that time, they did not get sealed, at least at the date of their wedding. In 2017, Taylor made an Instagram post. At this time, she was pregnant, um, saying that they had either gone to a wedding or been part of a wedding and that they were planning on getting sealed in the temple themselves with their daughter later that year in 2017. Um, that was the only reference to that that really I could find. Um, whether that really happened or not, I'm not sure. Okay. So. For those who may have missed our temple series, you can check it out here. But sealing and marriage are different in Mormonism. So marriage by the civil law is more of a kind of second rate thing that people will do just to be in good standing with the church so they're not living in fornication and things like that being sealed is being married according to god's law and the idea is that you're married for time and all eternity so that is the gold standard in mormonism is to, to be sealed so just a little tidbit so they can be married like civilly, civilly. and have sex and that's fine like there's no issues yeah. there the law of chastity is that you don't have any sexual relations outside of marriage with anyone who is not your spouse. And we're going to come back to that in a minute. I just pulled a really long hair out. <laughs> Anywho. Okay. So first kid in 2017, they have had a second one since then in one of their TikTok videos, because as you can see in like the just few you've seen is all of them live in McMansions, at least it appears as though when they film their videos. McMansions. So it they get a lot of questions on TikTok about what they do for a living. And so in one of those TikToks, Miranda, who we will talk about in a minute, and Taylor both said that their husbands work in the same, like doing the same thing, which they call the medical software sales. We're not more specific than that. Um, they also, the three of them, it's kind of sketchy on who is what now, and I'll get into that in a second. But they also have a store um, called Happy Valley, Without the E. V-A-L-L-Y. V-A-L-L-Y. 
Um, it's a clothing company. It's from the Instagram that I looked at. It's tiny. It doesn't have a lot of posts. It's obviously like Miranda and Taylor that are and their husbands that are in the photos. So it's clearly at least from that point theirs. Um, but it, it's tiny. It doesn't look like that's mm. something that they're like dedicating their lives to at this point. So number two, we have Camille. She is married to a man named Sam. Now I have insider intel on Camille. I will not reveal my source, but I was able to verify it. So it is verified information. Okay. It's not like dirt or anything, but I just wanted to make sure I had the most accurate information possible. So the difference between, I mean, and I guess it really depends because if you've watched our influencer video pertaining to garments, you know, there's a temple ceremony that you have to partake in in order to get the garments and start wearing them. And that typically requires you getting married or going on a mission or et cetera, right? So once you go through that ceremony, that's what's expected of you is that you're going to wear those garments day and night, right? For the rest of your lives. Suck it up. That's what it is. That's what you got to do. The rest of your life, damn it. So it is unclear on how many of these women were sealed in the temple because then they would be required by the church to wear their garments. And none of them are doing so. I have it on good authority, verifiable authority that Camille specifically has never been through the temple. So she does not have garments to wear. Yep. So that's an important distinction to make. Now, is that the case for the rest of them? I don't know. Not for sure anyway. So Camille's husband doesn't wear garments apparently by choice. Um, he was married once before Camille. So he did go through the temple from what I can gather at least once. So he chooses not to wear his garments. So different, different thing. And we love that. We love that people can choose what underwear they're wearing. We don't care. We want to make that clear because I'm sure people, it, the, part of the reason why I didn't really want to talk about this too much before was because Mormons are like, she's not Mormon enough to be Mormon. And ex-Mormons are like, she's not Mormon enough to be Mormon. <laughs> so we kind of come from both sides of the, the, the thing. But now we've kind of come into our thing where people are rep misrepresenting what Mormonism is. And saying that you can't wear your garments, you don't have to wear your garments, is misrepresenting Mormon theology in essence. So That's we'll our beef back. with Mormon influencers. We'll get back to that. We'll come back to that. So as far as the other girls, I don't know for sure. Like I said, I have more insider info on Camille, but they, that person that I know was able to verify for me that they are not really active in the church, which means they're not really participating like on a regular basis, which would make sense to me. I'm here for it. Um, they affirmed for me that they go to church on holidays and they did have their, their baby blessed, but that's kind of the gist of it. Um, one of their, I don't know if it's Camille or Sam's, but I think it's Sam's dad is really high up in Mormon church leadership. Like, high up. Um, Quorum of the 70, I think you yes, said, right? Yes. Which so. is a paid position. Correct. Correct. So at least family gives the vibe that is invested in the church. So. Or at least they have something to gain by association with the church. Correct. And then as far as the Happy Valley situation, the... I can't get over the, the, <laughs> the spelling. So dumb. Why? <laughs> as far as that goes, it's like in some of the murmurings that I heard, it was like Camille and Sam weren't participating in the Happy Valley situation anymore. Like the, the business, but the LLC is in his name. So I don't know what the deal is on that. I don't know. So that's the two of them. They have one kid together. Um, he has previous kids from a previous marriage. They also did not get married in a temple. It was a cute wedding. She had a cute dress, but it was not Mormon approved by any standard. The third and final of our little trifecta group is Miranda. She's married to Chase. They have two kids. I was able to garner a lot of information from Camille and Taylor based off their Instagram. As of the recent events of the last few days, Miranda put her Instagram on private. So secondhand posts, secondhand things and things I'm pulling from TikTok because there was a great deal of information that was probably taken away there. They something that I did notice on TikTok is they have some like recently her and her husband have some like weird TikToks where 
they're like defending their relationship because they like broke up a lot before they got married and they were like yeah so on and off relationships can work and, th- and i'm like who are you trying to justify that to like, that aged like milk okay <laughs> <laughs> i don't care i don't care if you broke up fifty thousand times before you got married who cares yeah that just good gives me for you. good for you that you can resolve conflict right so. That just gives me you like snaps for that, insecure about relationship vibes that I have to prove yeah. it to everybody that my relationship is solid. Who knows? Also, the same dude that does the medical software sales, really vague on that. So here's where we kind of get into the dish, right? The tea. Spill. The tea. So <laughs> <laughs> there are other people involved in their little mom talk group. But essentially, from what I can gather, what happened is there is kind of a like group in a group from the mom talk group of people from mom talk who participate in soft swinging. From the definition of Taylor, everything but going all the way. So anything is fair game except going all the way is how she described it. Is that like a thing? I am very uninformed so is that like a thing or is that something that they've basically just kind of invented is this like, like a soaking Mormon version of swinging? Is, is it the, the soaking version of swinging <laughs> i don't know i don't know um so there is another couple that are involved in this i don't want to name them because in my research they've like basically gone completely off the grid I could not find stuff about them really anywhere. They've locked down social media. Everything's private. The only There were a few things I could find, but I don't want to like include their pictures because they are going like out of their way not to be involved mm-hmm. in this. So I hear that, but we will talk about their involvement in this situation in a moment. Okay, so let's get into the timeline. Why we're here, what happened, what the hell, okay? To begin... Now that I've introduced to you the main characters, we're going to talk about Taylor first because Taylor is extremely popular on TikTok. I think she has over a million followers, if not over two, I think. Um, She has a history of making jokes on TikTok and then like just not addressing the information in the joke and then just like further perpetuating it and never talking about it. So for a long time on TikTok, she would say that she was Miranda and Camille's mother or grandmother and that she was 50 years old and that Miranda and Camille were her two daughters and people were like buying into this shit. I I fell for it. I was like, what the f*** is going on with this? Because I'd come across it. I was very confused. So it sends people down a rabbit hole and then gets them invested in her videos. So you're yeah. watching a bunch of her videos trying to figure out what's going on. Luckily, I just went, what the f*** and <laughs> scrolled. <laughs> so. <laughs> so she makes these jokes, doesn't ever like address them seriously. So everybody like the whole like shtick around Taylor's TikTok was that nobody knows what the f*** is going on and everybody's confused. Like unless you're in the in group, like otherwise you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Or you're invested. Or you're invested and you're like, "Mm, no, I get it. So (laughs) I want to play you some videos of things that she has said, jokes that she has made on TikTok, and then we can proceed further into this, okay? For the listeners, uh, because I had to remove the audio, that said, uh, a commenter asked, do you do mom swap? Wife swap. Wife swap. Sorry. And uh, the response was, depends on the day. With the three of them. Yes. In the, the same typical yoga pants, sports bra outfit. Swapping is another word for swinging for those that are not in the know. Yeah. It's not like... It's not like the TV show Wife Swap. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a very different thing. When I was Mormon, that's probably what I would have thought it was. Oh, hell yeah. They're on Wife Swap. I love TLC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second video, again, with no audio because copyright. So we have the two of them, the two couples. We have Tate and Taylor and Chase and Miranda. 
There's Lots so many names. names. Please don't Sorry. come at me if I get confused. But basically, they address this like head on in this one. Literally, the top little text is, are we swingers? So they're standing next to their not husbands. They've swapped they're in not this. not husbands. They're not husbands. I they've, coined that term. Sorry. <laughs> they've swapped in this video. And then after the song plays, they swap back to their original husband. And the, the ending text is, no, we're just best friends or something. So another direct reference to what's okay. going on. This one actually used the same audio as the last one, but uh, who do we have here? We have Miranda and Camille, yeah. and they're about to smooch, and then Taylor comes up and pushes them aside, and uh, the text overhead initially reads, we're just friends. I guess it says it the whole time. The text overhead says, we're just friends. In quotations. In quotation marks. So, okay. so all of this because of Taylor's profile is interpreted as a joke. Yeah, it's just ironic, guys. It's just a joke. We're not really serious about this. It's funny. It's funny. Okay. Which I don't understand why people's sexuality is a joke, but that's just me. Anywho. So uh, then things start to get spicy. Taylor, and this is when I initially got sent messages about this, is we will play the little TikTok overhead. It's just Taylor sitting on the floor with her feet up on the wall. Um, kind of sad fishy. Very sad fishy about single parenting. In the previous video, she says, my husband and I are getting divorced. So she made some... Yeah, these were like on the same day too. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Double post. So she posts that they're getting a divorce and then she posts some TikToks about moving out, being a single mom, things of that nature. So murmurings start to happen, yeah. right? There, There's waves being made in the mom talk group. Whether or not people are involved at this point, things are, things are moving around. As this divorce caught wind... Taylor's a very popular influencer. Rumors start to swirl, right? So rumors start to come out that she cheated on her husband with a member of the mom talk community or of the Mormon mom community. The Mormon MILF talk. The Mormon community. MILF talk. They have so many freaking I names. Know. Stupid, stupid hashtags. So that rumor started swirling that she cheated on Tate with somebody else in their group. So that's what started to get thrown around. Some weird things happen on social media. Some people begin unfollowing each other. Some people begin deleting photos of each other, start removing things, Ooh. deleting friends, things of that nature. Um, and then Taylor goes on to post a TikTok claiming that her and Tate are friends. And then she commented that she'll still make a video addressing everything at a later point. Um, so then <laughs> there's a few different theories about why this is happening that I'm going to return to in a minute. But this is when shit hits the fan. So Taylor goes live on TikTok and spills the tea. This was the interesting point because up until this, any of my other social spheres, this had not bled into. This was the first time that I was on Reddit and it popped up organically in my feed. I was like, whoa, okay, this is kind of getting big now. It is now. everywhere. And I, I'm not part of any communities where this would normally come up, but it was odd. Weird. So she gets on live and just lets loose. She just puts everything all out in the open. So she says, you know, me and Tate are getting divorced. And then she goes on to say this. Um, so back to being in an open relationship, Tate and I kind of opened those doors and we had people in and vice versa to make it clear. Um, again, I'm speaking in gray. He never like fully went like, I don't know what you would call it if it's like soft swinging, but you don't like fully switch if that makes sense and go all the way. And to be honest, I did, we had an agreement like all of us and I did step out of that agreement um she goes on in this live to address a few things they're getting divorced she calls it soft swinging anything but actually going all the way 
she did cheat on Tate because she went off with another man in the group. So the agreement, essentially, that she goes on to talk about in this live is that as long as they weren't going all the way and everything was done in front of everyone in the group, like the husband or the wife had to be present while things were happening so that everybody was aware of what's going on and everybody yeah. was on the same page. Is what hey, she that said. seems kind of no nonsense to me. It so. seemed like... If you're organized, you know, that's great. For I feel like it's a good way to do it. Yeah. Nobody's in the dark on what's happening. So that that was the agreement. So Taylor broke that agreement with another a husband in the group. She doesn't name who, but she broke that agreement by going off with this person by themselves. And she termed it hooking up. I don't know. She didn't specify if they went all the way or not, I don't think. But they broke the agreement. So that's what she said led to the divorce was her breaking the agreement, cheating on Tate. And she clarified in this live that the wife of the person that she cheated on her husband with has also been intimate with her husband. She also goes on to clarify that the group of friends that she's discussing were all swingers and they were all intimate with each other. She clarifies that. So it wasn't all ironic. No. It was all literal. It was very literal. Like I was just j joking about. <laughs> yes. She clarifies that the husbands never did anything intimate with each other. It was just. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It was just um, the wives with each other and then swapping husbands. She did clarify that. She specifies in this live, she says she's not going to name people. She repeats like multiple times. She's like, if you follow me on TikTok and you've seen my videos, it's not going to be hard to put the puzzle pieces together. So she's laid it all out for you really nicely, which is why we're all here, right? But halfway through the live video, she stipulates explicitly that Camille and her husband are not involved in the swingers group. Interesting. She said they brought too much drama to the group and they didn't feel like the group didn't feel like they were a good fit. And then there was some hinting that Camille didn't want to participate. So Camille is kind of excused from the <laughs> swinging situation, at least in in that sense, because she's the only one in this live who's named as not participating. Taylor does not clarify anyone else. So she goes on to say that all of this, the the group, the swinging, the agreement, everything fell apart on one night. She clarified that her hooking up with this person was, she wanted to make it clear that it wasn't just, oh, I just went and cheated on my husband with some random man. It was, we participate in a swingers group and we're all intimate with each other and I took it too far. And so she did apologize and take accountability for the part that she screwed up. But she said everything went to shit on this evening when this happened, there was also a big friend blow up that she doesn't clarify what happened, just that like friend shit got crazy, secrets came out, bad things happened. And then she like clarifies that they were very, very, very intoxicated when all of this was happening. Which again, <laughs> we're pretending to be Mormon now because can Mormons drink alcohol? No. No, they can't. No, I had to tell BYU-Idaho this morning that I would not be returning. That's true. And that was one of the reasons. <laughs> <laughs> she said that they drank when they got together and had these things, which she at least once mentioned like every weekend that this was going on. So drinking was happening uh -oh. quite frequently, which is another tick against the, we're yeah. really pretending to be Mormon, even though we're not. She clarifies that a lot of the people in the mom talk group either work with each other or work with her husband. And so things had to be kept at least mostly civil because of the awkward dynamic of working together. She clarifies that the people that are involved in this group are going to deny everything that she's saying. <laughs> Which if, uh -oh. you, if you're in a Don your tinfoil hats. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in a swinger group and you don't want that as public information and then it comes out, I could see people denying and being that. like, yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm, well, I'm not doing that. And especially with the dynamic of Mormonism, yes. where all of these people are claiming that they're Mormons, uh, it, I could see where it would be harmful to your 
family. Familial relationships and this kind of news breaking to them. So Correct. So she said everybody would deny. She said she didn't name anybody specifically, but she's like, you know, if you follow me, then you know who my friends are. It won't be hard to figure out aside from Camille, right? She also talks about in this video that her and her husband went to both of their families and told both of their families everything that was going on, including the swinging. She said in no uncertain terms that her family was disgusted and was very, very, very upset um, by this information. That tracks. She said she was raised in the church. They were raised very traditionally. She said we were disciplined. And she's like, my family was just really disappointed because of, it sounds like they grew up pretty Mormon. And so this is well outside the confines of Mormon sexual participation. So, and she said that this last week when all this was happening, when Tate told his parents, it seemed like they had a similar reaction. She said that it had been like the worst week of their lives to have to disclose all that information to family and friends and things, which I get. Did, did Were they not on social media? Was Did this really come as a surprise? If you're joking about it all the time on social media, do you, I mean, let's not do her family that dirty. Right? I mean, I, I don't Maybe know. she, I mean... It's really easy to come across shit on TikTok and we can, <laughs> we can, we're prime examples of that. Sometimes you just and this you was end not... up being forced into some people's for you page that you didn't intend. Exactly. Well, and this was not like shocking to a lot of people. Like the no. reason that they made that TikTok where they're like, are you swingers? It's because people started asking. And so I think some people were right on the money with the vibe being. Yeah you know, not traditional Mormon, like, mm, there's something going on here. So that is the live that happened. After she went live and disclosed all this information, didn't name anybody but Camille, Miranda and her husband get on TikTok live on their profile. And then they say that they're not involved in swinging. They emphatically state multiple times, we're not swingers. We don't swing. That's not what we do. We don't participate. She said she clarifies that Camille and her husband are involved with the Happy Valley situation, which makes sense given what they hinted at earlier and that they're on good terms. So it seems that her and Camille are still friends and things are fine there. Um, she clarifies that her and Taylor had a falling out because Camille had told her that Taylor had started a rumor that her husband had feelings for her, which had hurt. Miranda's feelings to be like, hey, your husband has feelings for me. Yeah, that's fucking awkward. Um, nobody <laughs> wants that. So she was offended by that. And mind you, in Taylor's life, she talks not only about just people like fooling around and making mistakes, she like multiple times mentions people catching feelings. Quote unquote, making mistakes. In the Mormon view. So if you're not like, if you grew up Mormon, you might potentially have a warped perspective on polyamory, sexuality in general. And so your perspective might be a little warped in this area. So I don't know that this group of people was set out to be like perfectly prepared for what they were getting into yeah. because of the limited information that they had. I don't know. Yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of nuance that we miss because everybody has different lives. But the common experience that we all had was being immersed in purity culture, mm -hmm. teaching abs total abstinence before marriage, and then total fidelity after you're married to your spouse. So this goes against those teachings. That is the law of chastity in a nutshell. So this is... In any circumstance, this would be totally breaking all of that. So it's taboo for Mormons to do anything like this. Even just like kissing somebody else's husband is taboo because that is not allowed in the slightest, especially for people who have been in the temple. Miranda's husband denies that that statement, that rumor was had any accuracy that he has feelings for Taylor. He denied that. 
um, Camille or Miranda had said that it did hurt her feelings, which I understand. And that's why her and Taylor had the falling out. She does say in that live that her and Taylor had been talking at least like the half hour prior Mm -hmm. to the live. So there was communication going on there at that point. So it sounds like not only would, did shit go awry in the swinging group for the swinging shit coming out, obviously, but multiple people, Taylor confirmed multiple people in the group had caught feelings. So it was this weird dynamic that was happening. So the overall consensus after of the people who have been watching this unfold is that the interaction between Miranda and her husband was kind of bizarre and their whole life was kind of bizarre and they just seemed like really awkward. And so lots of not believing Miranda and Chase, at least on that aspect. Already some hesitation, hesitation about believing that Miranda and Chase weren't in fact swinging in the group. I'm not here to tell you if they are or aren't because who knows the only people who know are the people involved but i'm just going to present you the information that we have so right after the additional miranda live taylor gets back on live again clarifies some things acts really awkwardly and says that miranda and chase have asked her to come on and clear their name that's what she says it's not like a I just wanted to come back on and say, like, Miranda and Chase weren't a part of it, and I didn't want to name them explicitly, but they're not. It was, Miranda and Chase told me I had to get back on here and clear their name. Like, Uh Uh-oh, that seems a little... That seems a little sus. A little iffy. Seems a little sus. So, obviously, there are a million possibilities. Did they bribe her into saying, clear our name and we'll do whatever. Just clear our name. Okay. Could be. So, this is when things get even more spicy. Spicy, spicy. Spice. I don't know where this originated, but it got thrown around on Reddit real quick. Leaked photos of Taylor and Miranda in compromising positions got leaked to the internet. Um, There are two photos in question particularly. I'm not going to share those photos with you because that's inappropriate. So we're not going to do that. I don't recommend going out and searching them either. I came across them by accident, unfortunate for me, because that's not things I wanted to see today. (coughs) So I came across it before it got deleted in the Reddit sub that I was looking at. And so I have seen these two photos. They are compromising positions. It is Miranda and Taylor. I mean, faces are obscured, but not entirely. And so these photo and it's not just like a I can talk about this okay because I was in a sorority I have sisters there's weird things that happen in sororities right there's like some weird dynamics so I'm familiar with this stuff right I was a girl in college at one time okay yeah so never in my life in my bisexual sorority attending life did I ever take photos like that with a bestie Okay, this is a little more explicit than I think most people would. Yeah. This would be bordering on Mormonism classified homosexual behavior territory. Yes. yes. So, absolutely. And so, what happens with these photos is they are screenshots from an OnlyFans account. And the OnlyFans account is in Miranda's name. And her profile picture on the OnlyFans account is her face. So, As soon as this came out, essentially, and Miranda was made aware of what was going on, she immediately responded saying that these photos had already circulated like a year ago, and they had to take legal action to get them taken down. So there was a few stories that originated. She said that these photos were taken at a bachelorette party like five years ago before they had kids. Now there's some speculation that Taylor and Miranda weren't even friends at that point. (laughs) So what's the best way you can justify these photos to the internet without them thinking that you have an OnlyFans where you make this kind of content? Deep fake, not me. Or a bachelorette party. Bachelorette party. Where women are known to get friendly. Friendly. (laughs) And they did say they would drink alcohol, so I guess that would track. That's true. So the thing is, though, is there was also a comment that circulated for people that supposedly know what Taylor and Miranda that was like, take this down. You know, they're aware of it, but it was a photo that was taken and posted on an OnlyFans account that they weren't aware of, 
even though it's in Miranda's name. But here's the thing about OnlyFans is you've got to go through some pretty extensive verification in order to have an OnlyFans account to like verify that it's you. Like you've got to like upload IDs, like it's, it's intense. And so it's not like somebody can just like pretend to be Miranda on OnlyFans and like get away yeah, with it. Yeah, if it were other places, it would be a lot more plausible, but uh, yeah. You can't do that. No. OnlyFans keeps that shit on lock for a reason. So sketchy. The OnlyFans account is not there anymore. It has since gone private. There was speculation from a few followers of hers that at one point in time, she had her OnlyFans link in her bio on TikTok. I have not been able to verify that, but there was <laughs> a lot of murmuring about that. So maybe they were more open about it. I don't know. On a link tree, yeah. I don't, who knows? Who I don't knows? care. There's no judgment here, but we're just trying to put pieces together. But saying that you don't have an OnlyFans, but it's in your name and has your profile picture. And this happened at a bachelorette party one time when the photos in question involved two different, like two completely different hairstyles. And it appears that they were taken on two entirely different nights. So the stories. Not adding up. Not matching up. Things aren't making sense here. And so the wide perception that I've gotten from frequenting the Reddit subs on the internet that are talking about this is that nobody really believes Miranda, that she's not involved in the swinging, that people believe that she actually is and they just don't want to own it, which is fine. Is I, fine. It's understandable. I get it. Given, yeah, given the circumstances, it's 100% understandable. Totally get it. But when stuff like this, I mean, when you have an OnlyFans... And then stuff like this comes out. Like, I feel like people are just going to piece that together real quick. Like, it's not going to yeah. seem super believable when that information gets put together with this. Like, does that make sense? Like, there's nothing wrong with having an OnlyFans. And there's nothing wrong with swinging. And there's nothing wrong with not wanting your family, presumably, <laughs> to know no, about yeah, it. Yeah, especially if they're conservative Mormon people. Right. You know. But here's the problem that we always come back to, which is you put this stuff on the internet. And these girls have addressed this head on. They've made jokes about it. Camille and Miranda were in that TikTok a few minutes ago where they nearly almost kissed and then Taylor came in and it's so funny. Haha. <laughs> but here we are. Like, I don't feel bad for the people involved entirely because of the nature of the situation. Yeah. When you want to put your life on display your downfall will also be there, so. Exactly, exactly. Camille confirms in some posts that her and her husband aren't swingers and never wanted to be. She also alluded to more information potentially coming out. Don't know. And Miranda has not really commented or made any other comments other than just like trying to return things to normal. Like she made a comment today of being like, I don't even want to be a part of this and I'm being dragged into this and I'm wanting to run away from it. And I'm like, hmm. And then last but not least, most recently, Miranda refollowed Taylor on TikTok. So it seems that like these two have like reestablished that they're okay, which seems interesting because they weren't following each other until Taylor came back on the live and said they weren't involved and now they're good again. <laughs> seems sus. Name cleared. Seems sus. So all of that taken into account, like I said, this video would be five hours long if I were to spare you like I'm going to spare you all the tiny details because we just don't have time so let's talk about the implications with all of this for Mormonism because that's in my opinion why this story this dynamic is yeah. making headlines because people are like Mormons can swing yeah it's not that there's obviously been boundaries crossed and it's not that people you know this is the lifestyle of a lot of people and that's totally okay. It's that the whole fucking brand was we're MILFs and we're Mormons, we're Mormons and we do all this. And hey, did we mention that we're Mormons? Hey, our husbands have the priesthood and all of that stuff. So that is where things start to be uh, a little murky and messy and where we more take issue with things. Some of the things that I've seen recently are people saying that there's more than one way to Mormon. And there definitely is. Just in my belief, it's not the way that they're saying. There's They're saying that there's more than one way to Brighamite mainstream LDS Mormon. But there's also the, the Warrenites and the other FLDS and Community of Christ type of Mormonism. That's where I think it's different. 
But as far as it comes to the mainstream LDS church, I don't believe that there's more than one way to Mormon because there are set rules that one needs to follow. And usually we hit on, hey, you have to, in order to hold a tech temple recommend, you have to agree to these things. You have to tell your bishop that you abide by these commandments and you wear your garments and everything like that. But these are more of the basic principles. And we're talking about people who may or may not have entered the temple. But these are things that they're asking eight-year-old children to uphold when they're baptized as a child, which it sounds like each of these people, Were. that was the situation. One of these commandments that people agree to uphold and strive to uphold when they become a Mormon is the law of chastity, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. Law of chastity is defined as... We are to have sexual relations only with our spouse to whom we are legally married. No one, male or female, because it's only a binary in the Mormon church, is to have sexual relations before marriage. After marriage, sexual relations are permitted only with our spouse. So after marriage, only with your spouse. It's stipulated right there. And that will ex extend to anything that could be deemed sexual in nature. So... Now I will say, there is nothing other than pure anecdotal people experience. There is like this kind of weirdly established thing within the ex-Mormon community that there is like this underground group of swingers within Mormonism, like in down further south communities and just kind of in general. So I've never met a Mormon who also swings and is open in that information, but it seems yeah. to be like established that there's this underground Mormon swinging thing that's happening. How accurate is that? I don't really know. Your mainstream probable Mormon probably isn't going to be involved in something like that. Could I see younger Mormons potentially being involved in something like that? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. We are also not part of that lifestyle, so we don't have any firsthand experience. No. If we are incorrect in that, that is totally fine. Uh, but as far as we know, experientially, we don't. So yeah. part of obeying the law of chastity, because it is a huge sin if you break it. The Book of Mormon says that sin of sexual nature is third only behind the shedding of innocent blood and the highest, most unforgivable sin, which is denying the Holy Ghost. So that is the, the hierarchy of terrible sins so adultery would be pretty damn high up there because it is the sacred and most high order of god's family yada yada whatever in the past if you committed adultery you would almost always be excommunicated nowadays the um the church handbook and the way that the government of the church runs is when something like that comes to light you're called into a court of love which is not really a court of love. It is a, a membership council where your membership could be terminated. And they assess whether, how they can help you to repent, which could mean disfellowship, not being able to partake in church services or the sacrament and everything like that. Or a lot of times what happens is if they're unrepentant or they're deemed that uh, more strict action needs to be taken, they just excommunicate you outright. So, I mean, we know of people personally who were excommunicated for adultery, for cheating on a spouse. Yeah, so, so it is a potentially excommunicable offense. So if these people, like, for example, were involved in the church and had temple recommends, which allowed them to participate in church activities, like if this information came out and their bishop got wind of it, that's a violation of the law of chastity. So one, they'd lose their temple recommend, and two, they'd be disciplined. So excommunication, especially for the couples that have gone through the temple, would not be off the table. Yeah, yeah. And when I see people where they're vehemently denying any involvement or anything like that, the, I see that as controlling the narrative because of the consequences with their families. I mean, if <laughs> your dad or whatever is in the 70s, he's deep in the church and it's a central tenet of your family's life and then suddenly you're excommunicated and you've just cut off the possibility of sealing their grandchild to them 
that can be absolutely relationship breaking for a lot of people. Yeah. So there's the the social pressure surrounding the family that could be motivating some of these decisions where they're trying to to keep everything in or be able to do damage control and things like that because they're scared that their families are going to cut them off just because they're living the way that they want to live. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of shitty. So there is like you know, people, the question that I see in these subs are, can, I didn't know Mormons can do this. And well, they can't, they can't, they're not <laughs> supposed to, I mean, they can, but yeah. they're not supposed to. They're not so supposed to. disciplinary action absolutely could be taken. If they're inactive and their bishop doesn't even know who they are, is anything going to happen? Probably not. But the church does not have problems disciplining people who are in the public sphere, especially if they are harming the church's name. Like, this is garnering some some attention, and I yeah. imagine the church PR department is very much aware of this. So this is definitely on their radar, and they're definitely making decisions about it. In my mind, it'd probably be easier to ignore it, but if this becomes a whole definitely. thing, they will probably make a statement about affirming the law of chastity or do a conference talk about affirming the law of chastity and not having extramarital relations. Or anything, yeah, being friendly with your the sanctity friends of marriage. and spouses, friends, yeah. So discipline isn't off the table. If something could happen, would these people share it if it did? Who even knows? But I think the bigger thing is, again, we have influencers, and this is what we talk about. And I think these girls are a perfect, perfect, perfect example of this. Is It's not Mormonism. It's not. It's not. Like... They can label it, they can talk about it, they can label it Mormon MILF talk and Mormon mom talk and mom talk and all these things, but it's not. Like, it's not. Like If, if something is fundamentally in a, opposition to your lifestyle, to who you are, because th- this can extend to a lot of other things, to queer folks and a lot of other aspects of people's lives. But if you're in direct opposition to something that your church which has to be your central tenet of your life why are you trying to fit yourself into that box yeah why are you trying to push that this is what it is even though it's not yeah you're trying to like fit your lifestyle around mormonism like just don't put yourself in the mormon box like just don't do it because now there's this whole concept like Again, every all the influencers do this. They shift the narrative of the church for for outsiders thinking that the Mormon church is more progressive than it actually is. And this thing is doing that same thing because it's shocking. And I mean, a lot of people are like, no way. These are like shitty Mormons. There's no way. But a lot of people who have no knowledge might be like, what the fuck? Like, can yeah. Mormons actually do that? And that's why this whole influencer cycle is so toxic because the whole point is the amount of harm the Mormon church does. If you're new here, we have a million videos about it. They cause extensive harm, especially to marginalized groups of people. And so our whole goal is to have people be aware of that knowledge. So new people don't come and join the Mormon ranks. Yeah. And when you have influencers who put Mormonism in a different light, that's actually inaccurate and doesn't fit with the Mormon rules, the expectations, the culture at all, then you're leading people to something that actually isn't what they think it is. Like it's false. Because there is absolutely 100% a baseline level of commitment that you have to be to be in the Mormon church. And if you're in a position where you have to run and hide your entire life in order to not have family and lives absolutely destroyed, why would you con- continue if you're in a safe space to be away from it? Why would you continue to promote that and to sell it as something that's okay? Like, I understand there's nuance with like queer youth and things like that, where if they were to leave the church, they might be in a situation that's unsafe. That's and I totally get that. It's totally different. But these are adult people who don't live with their parents. Yeah, so I, it's really hard for me <laughs> to feel bad when people are like, we're Mormons and awesome and blah, blah, blah. And then when unsatisfactory in the Mormon lens, things come out, they have to run and hide and explain away and do all these things or like Taylor's done and 
come out and own it. But it sucks that it's that way, and I don't understand why people are pushing it to be something that's not. Well, and the, there's some members of the mom talk who are, like, not the face of the group who are, like, she's just taken everybody down with her. And it's, like, you chose to align yourself with these people. That's just, yep. like, I mean, when you have a small friend group like that and you make it your whole fucking personality that you're this mom talk group and you guys yeah. are all so progressive and cute with your little leggings on and you're, like, the cool Mormon moms, not, like, the regular Mormon Utah moms. Not the dusty old ones that make... Frog eye salad and no. funeral potatoes. No you, way. You get swig and you and wear <laughs> crumble leggings. cookies. <laughs> Which and is I, awesome. All that is awesome. We don't care. But I don't care what you do personally. But you can't be mad when something like this happens and it's your friend group. Like you can yeah, come why? out and say, I don't do that, but this is the situation that you've placed yourself in. You chose to align yourself with these people. And I'm not entirely convinced that the mom talk group members who weren't potentially swinging weren't aware that the other ones were. Yeah. I don't quite know that to be true. So the actual question that arises unrelated to Mormonism is what's the point? Because there's a lot of theories around the universe right now about what all of the this universe. is. Is that Taylor fighting for her life to get on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? fighting for her life to get on that show could be is it all for a reality show did she turn into chris jenner and her whole goal is just to land them all a tv show where all of this because people are invested now they yeah. want to know like who are the mormon swingers and what are they doing or is it really just she came out here to clarify how she cheated on her husband and was how her life has it? been ruined because she grew up in the mormon church and is living a life that's incompatible with that yeah is it, is Miranda lying? Is Camille lying? Are they all lying? What's happening? What are your thoughts? Drop them in Drop the comments. Drop them in the comments. Because honestly, we were just Tell me. perplexed. There are so many different theories as to what could be going on here. I want to trust that Taylor's being honest. I don't, I mean, this shit ruined her fucking life. I don't realize, I don't think she has yeah. anything to gain by doing this. And she called out the people who weren't involved specifically. And so, I mean... She was very clear in her first live video that everybody was intimate with everybody. And so I don't know how else you could interpret that. I'm sorry. I yeah. don't know. So as you can see, Mormonism and Mormon theology and government and everything can just absolutely wreck people's lives. Um, there's the the purity culture aspect of it. There's the, the law of chastity and uh, the word of wisdom, which we didn't really mention, but... We like all of that. yeah we just kind of touched on that but all of these things kind of just add up to a toxic environment where these people are having to worry for all these different aspects of their life because suddenly what they were doing came to light and now there's consequences within the church about it and now it's not just like a privacy thing like now people know my business it's like it's much more than that in mormonism yeah. it's i built this brand around a church that disagrees with the uh, the stuff that I do. Well, yeah. now that's the thing is like, what happens to this mom talk group now? Because the actual Mormon people that might be involved are like, shit, this is not what I thought it was. And so it's just created this whole little, what do we call it? Cauldron of chaos that's Cauldron happening chaos. right now. Nobody fucking knows. By the time this video gets posted, you're watching this hopefully as it goes live on Monday. By the time you watch this, there will probably be already like 50 things that we didn't address. So for that, I am sorry, but we cannot, we are not newscasters. We cannot stay on top of it night and day. Yeah. In the end, Mormonism is incompatible with a lot of things in a lot of people's lives. And when you are one of those people where it's not incompatible with your or where it's not compatible with your lifestyle and you sell mormonism as anybody can be mormon there's not one way to mormon it's Aww. dishonest facts so that's what it really facts. boils down to you have to believe in god you have to believe in jesus and that the church of jesus christ is the only church on the face of the earth that is the one and true path that'll get you to exaltation so why lie to yourself and others when you're in a safe space to be able to just let that go for clout yeah for clout which is <laughs> is even worse <laughs> 
We talked about this. Well, ter- well, we talked about this until we were blue in the face with Amber Cl- Filler up Clark, and she's a more faithful person. She's not trying to <laughs> faithful. She's a separate unquote. influencer entirely. She but, is not a swinger. She is not involved in any of this yeah. in any way, shape, or form. She's a previous. So video. it's a different flavor of the same point, which is why are you peddling it when it's incompatible with what you're doing? So to reiterate. There's nothing wrong with ethical non-monogamy. There's nothing wrong with swinging. There's nothing wrong with wearing the underwear. Girls being friendly. Yeah, girls being friendly. There's nothing wrong with wearing the underwear that you want to wear instead of what 15 old men have said that you're required to wear after you enter a certain building. So that's all good. It sucks that people's lives are getting ruined. But again, this is kind of the web that they've woven. So it's a little hard to feel bad for them. Don't get involved in a high demand religion like Mormonism <laughs> if you can. If you're born into it, definitely uh, look at things from all sides because a lot of times the uh, the truth is not what they're telling you it is. So if you made it this far, thank you for sticking with us. Obviously, this one was a little heavy and gossipy and all of the things, but uh, we love you. If you're not subscribed already and you would like to hear more stuff about Mormonism and just crazy musings of two people who are trying their best, <laughs> hit the subscribe button or save this podcast or whatever you do. If you'd like to support us in a different way, we have our Patreon. We already talked about uh, our patrons are rolling up the screen right now. They're awesome. And you can participate in a cool live stream watch party with us at the end of next month if you would like to do that. And access exclusive videos and content. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Jordan McKay and you can find that. You can also join us on the Discord. This week has been absolutely unhinged. So if you join and you don't know what the (laughs) fuck is going on. I am sorry, but it's worth it. Come and join the it. fun. You just jump in where you can and keep chugging along from there because nobody remembers what happened last week anyway. If you'd like to follow along with us on a daily basis, Jordan posts on Instagram all the time. You can also find us on TikTok under at Jordan and McKay. It's a good time. Go follow us. Follow us. If you'd like to buy some cool merch that we have and sell, you can find us on Etsy. Happy Brain Collective is the name of our store. We also have, that is just our stickers that we do from our house. If you would like some articles of clothing or mugs that we do, those same designs, you can find the Teespring link in the description down below. And because I kind of forgot it last time, if you would like to have a signature scent that was directed by us, but expertly executed by the Exmo Candle Co., you can find our signature scent, Self Care Day, at exmocandles.com. It's bussin. Go check it out. It supports us. It supports small business, and it's an awesome product. So with that, we will leave you. Thank you, everybody. We love you. You're awesome. Stay safe out there, and we will see you next time.